in 2016, I moved out to New York. So just let me paint a picture of 2016. I moved three jobs. I got married. Wow. I moved country. And I just, just started a whole new life. Like my life just transformed. So we went through all of that with my wife yes. in one year. And by the way, all of that was surprises. The job change was surprises. Yeah. The country change was a surprise. The marriage was not a surprise. We planned right, that. Right, 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 right. But apart from everything else, everything was a surprise. Now I said I like surprises, so I can <laughs> roll with it. But my point is that's a lot of transition in a so year. So much transition. And I felt the burden of being in a new city where we had no family, we had no friends. And my wife, who loves being around her family and no one understands just how close she is to them, I felt this burden on me that I had taken away her time with her mm. family and now she was alone. So I was going out to work and she'd be crying at home. Mm. And I was thinking, she's got no friends, she's got no support. And I know you can relate to this yes. with moving and it's relationships lot, and so much going on. And so it's like, I'm dealing with that. And guess what, six months later, I have to leave and move on and work on a new career to build everything myself and then I'm four months away from being broke and so on top of all of this I've now got four months away from being broke I've got enough money money saved for four months to pay for rent and groceries and in that's New York it. City in New yeah. York City and that's <laughs> it and guess what even on top of that I've got 30 days before my visa runs out I'm kicked out of the country so I can't even live here anymore so not only have I just got married, moved job three times, changed career again, had to move into an apartment, four months of being broke, and I might get kicked out in 30 days, and my renewal for my visa cost $15,000. Oh. So that's gonna eat into those four months. I have probably never been under that much emotional, yeah. physical, and, and mental pressure in my life. Like genuinely, I felt it. And I felt my body change. My, my breath was more stressed. I would be breathing faster, shorter, shorter breaths, not deep breaths, heart beating not faster, out. not working out. You get into lazy habits, you start craving junk food. Sugar to get the energy. I'm yeah. living in a 500 square foot apartment with my wife, which is, which is tiny, like everything's in that space. And guess what, we both work from home. So I'm now sitting at a desk, hunched over, trying to figure stuff out. She's trying to cook in the same room. Like I'm trying to, just, just trying to figure out what to do. And I remember the next morning, sending like a hundred emails to people and just being like, this is who I am, this is what I can do, how can we serve? And that was the same year that I ended up meeting you later yeah. in that year. Mm -hmm. And the beginning three months of that journey was so stressful, like they were so stressful because I was like, what if I have to move back to London? What am I gonna say to her parents? I mean, I just took their daughter away. Like, uh, <laughs> just I've, got married. I've yeah. lived in New York City for six months and my life's falling apart, like, you know, so much. And I've got all these views, but there's nothing, there's nothing happening in. We met. But you also, you also, I mean, at this time, you're also growing so much. How are you able to create and reach this impact with your videos yeah. that's growing while you're under so much stress and uncertainty? And I stopped a bit at that time. Like things slowed I down hard. I like things slowed down. I remember. I, I wasn't creating as much as I was because I don't enjoy creating from stress or pressure. And I don't think you can really create something from stress and pressure. So we really slowed down at that time. And when I was creating, I was creating from a place of recognizing that I could share what I had learned and what I had grown in so far. So anything I was sharing was like, this is what I've learned so far. So that was the biggest pain that I've been through in the last seven years, for sure. And all I can say is that I remember coming home to my wife, knowing that this was gonna be the truth. And I came home and I said to her, I said to her, I guarantee you, this is gonna be the best thing that ever happened to us. What, the pain? The pain. I said that to the night I came home wow. and then she gave out for that. I literally came home, I looked her in the eyes and go, this is the scenario. And I just want you to know that I guarantee you to you, this is the best thing that's ever gonna to happen to us. And I said to her, and this is, this is a monk statement that we used to repeat, I said to her, I'm just not gonna judge the moment. Don't judge the moment. Because what we do is we try to label moments as good or bad. And when you label a moment as bad, it now does not have the opportunity to become good. I'll give an example. If I go, I don't like this book, this book's bad, right? And I don't, and I love this book. Yeah, yeah. But if I say that, sure. guess what? I will never pick it up and recognize the value that's inside of it because you've labeled it. Yes. And we label stuff, like we label, oh, that restaurant's bad. But when you label a that moment, person's bad, that man. person's bad. Now you can't learn from that person. Oh, a great one, that's a really good one. As soon as you start labeling people or anything as good or bad, you limit it. You stop it from being something else. And here's the truth, every moment can evolve into being anything if you give it the opportunity to. Right. But as soon as you say it's got no value anymore, you lose it. 
And so for me, I had to say to myself, don't judge the moment. And I'd keep repeating that don't to myself. Don't judge where you're at. Don't judge What's this. What's happening. Yeah, don't judge it as negative. Don't, don't just start saying it's negative. Because guess what? We've all been in positions where a gift turned into a curse and a curse turned into a That's gift. That's true. Right? We've also Where our been dreams came true and it ended up not being what we wanted. Exactly. And it fell apart and it led us into the, our dream. Totally. Why is it that so many people that win the lottery yeah. go broke? Yeah. Gifts can turn into curses too. True. But because we label them as the best moment in our life or the worst moment in our life. Whereas when you approach things to neutrality and just what you have on the table, you can be like, okay, what am I going to do next? That's why the greatest quarterbacks are neutral energy. They'll get a little excited. They'll get a little fist pump in there every, every now and then, but they're not hyped every play and they're not negative every play. They have this calm. They see the field. They, you drop a pass and it's like a little bit, let's go. But it's very neutral. Even when you score a touchdown, unless it's maybe the Super Bowl or a big championship at the end of a game, in the middle of the game, you want to keep it pretty like even keel paced so you can prepare for the best or the worst. That's great, yeah. But there if you're you always up and down, it's like your energy levels will go up and down and you'll be exhausted. Totally. You need to have energy in life. Totally. And if everything is tied around a story of, this is bad, this is wrong, I'm in a bad place, I'm messing up, I'm going broke, that energy is gonna pull you away from service. Exactly. Or creation, or creativity of how do I get out of this place. So I think it's really powerful. I love that. And, and I used to have a coach, and I think a lot of coaches use this, or at least he used to say to us, he would be like, if you, if you lose, cry for a day. And if you celebrate, if you win, celebrate, celebrate for a day. Yeah, that's it. And then move on the next move day, on. get back to training. Don't, don't let it don't run. Don't live it. in the past. Don't so live much. in the past. And what we do is when we lose, we cry for a month. And when we win, we just move on. Yeah. Which means that our negative experiences hold us back and weigh us down more than our positive experiences. Sure. So we're actually allowing, because we don't immerse ourselves in winning and growth, we only submerge ourselves in negative experiences. Yeah, we need to celebrate also. We try to celebrate. I've been, uh, you know, that's been part of my life as well, is like moving on too quick. And now Dude, we try to, to like, let's enjoy, let's go to lunch or dinner and really like appreciate this moment and celebrate this moment. And even have a dinner with some friends and family. Totally. Otherwise, why are we working so hard for it? 100%. And, and we almost feel like we can't, we can't do that because that makes us complacent. Right. But, but that's my point. It's never you, good enough. Exactly. But if you win, celebrate for a day. If you lose, cry for a day, move on. Simple. And you've learned so many lessons over your years. As a monk, you learned a ton of lessons. Moving to, you know, getting married, moving into a new country, building, building companies, launching products and books. And you've had ups and downs. What's been the biggest lesson in the last 12 months for you? Because you've learned, you've created so much in the last 12 months. You've done so many things. What's been the biggest lesson for you in your life? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> I think I'd have to say that it's a, and I was saying it to a friend on the phone this morning when I was on the way to you, mm -hmm. and I was, just, I was just sharing it with him because he was having a moment in recognizing this. There's a wonderful verse in the Manu Smriti, which I talk about in Think Like a Monk. It's a monk book. And in the verse, it says, when you protect your purpose, your purpose protects you. Now, I want to I unpack that. What I mean by that is your purpose is like a rare jewel and a rare gemstone. And imagine you were walking around with the most expensive diamond or jewel in the world. How would you protect it? You want to just like you just wave, wave it out, yeah. Yeah, you want to just wear it on your chest. It's like this. Like a baby. Holding it. Yeah. Putting a pillow around or a blanket. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, protect it. You'd protect it. And so your purpose is like that. And guess what? Wow. People are going to tell you every day that that jewel is not worth anything. They're going to tell you that that jewel is actually valueless. It doesn't have any impact on your life. They're going to try and take away that value. They're going to tell you that there's another jewel out there that you need to have more value. And what ends up happening is you don't, I love the word, look at the wording, protect your purpose. You have to protect it. So what happens is your success grows, you get more opportunities, more ideas, more things coming your way. Temptations. But they can all take you away from your Distractions, purpose. Yeah. Distractions. And to me, I'm repeating this for myself because I'm like, I just want to stick to what I was born to do. And I'm so grateful that I get to do it. I'm so happy I get to do it. And I want to keep protecting it. I don't want to get lost in the waves. You know, you don't want to just get chucked in the waves of the ocean and just get lost and just yeah. not know where you're going. So for me, when you protect your purpose, your purpose protects you. So that's been your biggest lesson? That's my biggest lesson. Why? Do you feel like your purpose has been maybe distracted in some I, ways? I don't or? think it has. 
but I'm saying it so it doesn't. Like <laughs> You're reminding yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'm reminding myself. Like I'm preaching to myself right now. It's Especially like, being in Hollywood and the temptation of all these yeah, opportunities out here. Totally. And I, and I think for me, it's a bigger lesson also because it gives me more faith. So I always encourage, and this is actually, actually, this is why it's my biggest lesson. I encourage so many people that I coach, so many people that I mentor, obviously everyone in my community and audience and everything to go and follow that, go and live that purpose. And I see time and time again, that when I see people trying to live their purpose, they are protected, that it, things work. When you're playing in your dharma and your purpose, things work, things move, you feel momentum. They happen. they happen. And I'm not saying they happen without effort, but they happen, they move. Whereas when you're not, you just constantly feel like you're grinding up against, you know, a war. I know, challenges. Just, just constant. So what is your purpose and when did you discover it? Good question. What is my, my purpose is simple. It, it's always has been since, not since the beginning because I discovered it afterwards. My purpose is making wisdom go viral. And I've stuck with that and I've kept it that way because to me, and, and there's more to it, making wisdom go viral through entertainment, I would say is my purpose because I believe that that is something that is uniquely my goal, impact and service. And the beautiful thing is I'm not limited to a platform. So that can be books, it can be podcasts, it can be TV shows, it can be movies. It's not limited. And this I learned by reading. I was reading after, and this was after my video started to, to get seen. This wasn't before I did it. It wasn't like I sat down and I wrote this fancy tagline. I was reading Salim Ishmael's book called Exponential Organizations. And in this book, he talks about something called an MTP, a massive transformational purpose. And he says that every major person organization in the world has an MTP. So an MTP has to be aspirational, it has to be massive and it has to be service and purpose based. So Google's is organizing the world's information. Notice it doesn't say we're an SEO company. Notice it doesn't say we do Google ads. Right. They're, <laughs> they're organizing the world's information. Yeah. That's how big they're dreaming. And when you're organizing the world's information, you can do driverless cars, you can do Google Glass, right. you can sell Google ads, whatever it is. And so Ted's is ideas worth spreading. That's what they are, that's what they're about. So Jay Shetty is making wisdom go viral. Yeah. That's what I'm dedicated to. If you want even more videos just like this one, make sure you subscribe and click on the boxes over here. I'm also excited to let you know that you can now get my book, Think Like a Monk, from thinklikeamonkbook.com. Check below in the description to make sure you order today.